Hello everyone, I'm Tom, and since this coronavirus disruption started, I've been hosting this vlog to eat beef jerky and connect across the internet. The beef jerky part is silly and pointless. I'm not a food critic. But this vlog has let me explore some fun ideas with you, especially regarding game design. And I plan to keep doing it. Today it is the 6th, no, the 14th of June. Halfway through June on 2020, the crazy year of 2020. Um, very stressful to be an American. Uh, it's not a time to be comfortable or uh, taking it easy, despite the fact that we're kind of still thinking all about staying home and not going anywhere because of the coronavirus. You know, it is, uh, I hate to say that old trope of it is what it is, that's not... I'm not a defeatist person, and I don't want to be, and I'm not now. I think we can get through this, and we can come out on the other side better. Um, but not everybody shares that, and a lot of people are at cross purposes. And that's at least inefficient. Uh, however, let's talk about lighter things. Um, uh, however, but I mean, hey, you know, I don't have to actually do a complete segue because what we're going to talk about today is this, the bundle for racial justice and equality. It's not actually <coughs> from the Humble Bundle Company, it's from itch.io. Itch.io, if you don't know, is basically like a, kind of an open source Steam. It's a, it's a marketplace for video games and associated materials. Um, and while it takes, you know, a day to fill out all the forms and satisfy all the data requirements on Steam, and it takes at least two weeks, I think, to even before you can press the publish button on Steam, uh, publishing on itch.io, ditch which is a similar marketplace, takes just a few minutes. It's much more free and open, and it incidentally allows you to sell your product in a lot of different ways. And uh, itch.io takes a lot of a, a much less of a cut than the 30% that uh, that Steam takes from me. Um, in fact, when itch.io started, they had a zero percent policy, and I think that now they've gone up to a few percent. <coughs> but at any rate, this bundle for racial justice and equality. I could talk a lot about things that I'm not necessarily fully qualified to talk about. This is, of course, to tell you that I'm not going to. Um, and I think that there's a lot that could be said about corporate opportunism and, uh, you know, the, the vision of change and how not every American shares it and uh, what does it mean to everybody uh, to to seek racial justice and equality. Um, and I'm not going to delve deep into that. I would like to instead to talk about how this ties in with, with a broken record that I've been for a long time, which is that it's easier today to make your video game than it has ever been at any time. And this is a prime example. The materials you need are, uh, are cheaper and easier to get, and there's more of them than ever. Now why do I say this? This looks like it's a bundle of video games. Well, mostly it is. It's about 92-93% video games, but that still means that my count is that there were 84 different files that I wanted to download from that big set. <coughs> um, 84 different files that were actual licensable game assets, mostly tile maps of outdoors or indoors and fantasy maps and fantasy monsters or characters, that kind of thing. But the bottom line is, yeah, 84 different packets of, of licensable video game art. You could buy them, you could use them in your video game, and your minimum donation is five bucks. Uh, though, of course, everybody recommends that you donate more. Um, the bottom line is, it's all within reach. It's all there. No wonder we're so-called in the indie apocalypse where everyone can make a video game because it's so much easier and cheaper to make a video game than it used to be. And this is just simply the latest example of a deal that's too good to pass up. Certainly, I could not pass it up. 
Um, so, but that's what I wanted to say this again, that whoever you are and whatever kind of video game you want to make and whatever your skill level and whatever your skill set, it doesn't matter. All those things, you know, it, none of those things get in the way of me stating the obvious, that it's easier to make your video game today than at any time ever. Uh, which is an amazing thing to say, uh, both bad and good. But, you know, I, I think it's a very important thing to, to, to understand for people who, who just started out and maybe thinking about making a video game, and also something to really understand about veterans in the industry like myself. The industry is mirrored by this fundamental shift in essentially expense um, and difficulty. Um, so, at any rate, I just I have been thinking about it quite a bit, and of course I purchased a license for the bundle, um, and that's what I wanted to share with you. However, that's not the the central point. The central point of this, uh, you know, I'm mirrored here, so I don't know which way I'm pointing initially. Uh, of of this vlog is beef jerky. And more specifically, if you've been watching this beef jerk, this, this beef jerky vlog, uh, you know that we have been making our way through this variety pack of mythical meats. And in fact, we have one left. We've had dragon. We've had chupacabra. We've had Loch Ness monster. We've had griffin. We've had so many. We've had nine, just straight up nine different flavors. And we found that mythical meats was honest about. Uh, making each beef stick, these are beef sticks, uh, a different taste than the rest. Um, and they're honest because they have fine print under the actual name, so it's not really Chupacabra and Dragon. Um, but they do use a variety of meats. And one thing that's been very consistent that is that as beef sticks go, they're not bad. They're specifically, they're not as greasy as many beef sticks I've had in the past. So here's the last one, the very last beef stick we're going to try. And then we'll have eaten all ten of the flavors from Mythical Meats. Here we go. This is... <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> the very last is Unicorn. The fine print says it's smoked beef snack stick. It's unicorn. Now, again, it's smoked beef. I'm not actually eating a unicorn. So, don't feel bad. Alright. Let's try the unicorn flavor from Mythical Meats. Is it rare? Smells like a normal beef stick. Let's give it a try. Mmm. So it starts off with a zing. It's a normal beef stick. <laughs> yeah. I would say that if it was trying to be mild, it uh, it failed. It definitely is bold right out of the gate. But not too hot. Just, you know, bold. Definitely spicy. Not intending to be boring and mild or deep. Um, not super sweet. I'm definitely feeling a little bit of heat now, but again, it's nothing like Dragon was. Or even like, you know, the bite from Loch Ness Monster. Uh, so, all good, yeah, yeah, I like the unicorn flavor. <laughs> the unicorn flavor. <laughs> Alright, while we're digesting the unicorn, <laughs> um, I will take a look at the mailbag. Um, and the mailbag is filled by Adam Para today, yesterday, first off, um, in yesterday's or the day before his video, the last video I made. Um, uh, he had mentioned um, a sit-down uh, that I had with some fans of my Artemis game. I told him that, of course, I do that all the time, and I, it's, it's always fun jabbering and blah, blah, blah about my stuff. I mean, come on. Uh, never hard from to get me to talk about things that I like. Go figure. Um, 
But at that time, I said, Adam, if you know of a download link so that people could watch or listen to that that interview, please post it. And he did. So thank you very much, Adam. I appreciate that. Go back to the previous video to this, which is, I believe, episode 35. This will be episode 36. And and check out the, the comment section, and Adam has provided the link. So Adam also had to say about the last video, thanks for talking about Armada Online. I enjoyed everyone's interview. As a veteran Artemis play player, I find it funny that new people would destroy their own base. Well, you would funny, find it funny, Adam. Um, uh, in, in my long 10 years of watching people play Artemis, there's barely a radical difference between how new crews play versus how veteran crews play. New crews don't know how to play, and the game is not rigidly structured to demand that they play in a specific way, and that that causes them to play in you know, the way they just decide to play, whether that's to be silly about it or to experiment a about with the limits of the game to see what the trouble they can get up to you know they do it all and they have fun with it veterans understand the game a lot better and understand what they want to get out of the game now that they understand the game a lot better so they fundamentally play a different game uh, and both are very fascinating to watch um adam also wrote i heard not all the final fantasies are connected that's true i always thought that was puzzling people want character growth like, look how many different Mario games there are. Oh, Adam. <laughs> I think that a lot of people would argue with you about the growth of the character Mario. Um, and it's, it's kind of a joke that every single Mario mainstream game starts with Bowser ca uh, kidnapping the princess, Princess Peach. It's a trope. It's such a painful trope. And people are you know, wondering why Nintendo continues with it. Same old thing every time. Oh no, something happened to the princess. She got captured by Bowser. And now Mario has to go jump on a million mushrooms to save her. Um, yeah, the technology grows over time. But I'm not so sure that Mario is, uh, is someone you want to hold up as a character in video games that has character growth. I'm not sure that's why people play those Mario games. Um, having said that, there's a lot of deep lore um, around Mario because of all the amazing games that have been made uh, starring Mario. But that's not the same thing as, you know, personal growth. But maybe you meant growth is in the product and the brand, and that makes sense. As far as the Final Fantasies being connected, though, that's quite true. Um, and the last time we talked about Final Fantasy, I pointed out that it was supposed to be the final, the ultimate fantasy, so they were going to pull, put everything into the game, everything in the kitchen sink. So that kind of vision of it has to be complete, it has to be complete S, it has to have everything, uh, doesn't lend itself to sequels. And I think that Square Enix, when they, uh, or Square, um, uh, when they first came out with it, um, they they recognized that they were like well we 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 went all the way and therefore we didn't build any space left for a sequel so what are we supposed to do about it so that's i think is what drives their vision of sure it's another final fantasy game but no there's not a lot of recurring characters there're not a lot of recurring themes or places you know we're not coming back to our same old haunts there are obviously exceptions Final Fantasy XV means there's been a lot of room for exceptions. Uh, very famously in the Final Fantasy lore, there's a kid, uh, sorry, there's a character named Sid who's always, okay, he's not always in the game, he's in a lot of the games, and he's become a trope now too. You know, somewhere in the Final Fantasy game, there's a game, there's a guy named Sid. Um, Sid Highwind or something like that. Um, and uh, and also uh, there have been sequels, of course. Well, yeah, Artemis. Sorry, what am I thinking? Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X two are direct sequels, um, and uh, and there are other sequels as well. And of course, there's the brand new Final Fantasy demo remake thing, which is you know very full, um, but definitely a, a remake of the same characters in the same places and the same plots. So, 
yeah, it's Final Fantasy is big enough to be complex that way. But thanks, thanks for 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 that uh, that feedback, Adam. Uh, I appreciate it. So to recap, um, we just had Unicorn, and we also just finished the Mythical Meats. We're gonna try a different variety pack when next you see me. Um, Unicorn wasn't bad, and in fact, I would hardly recommend the Mythical Meats. Uh, please watch all my videos, at least the last 10, so that you can get an idea of which particular mythical meat flavor you want, because they are different. If you like variety, then I do recommend the Mythical Meats Variety Pack. But, uh, but if, for instance, you really don't like chili that... that <laughs> an off-brand chili that you never liked in the first place, then you can stay away from the Chupacabra flavor. And if you really don't like heat... Don't go for the dragon flavor. So, um, that's that's how it is. And like I said, we'll have a brand new variety pack next time. So keep watching and click that little bell to get notified when I make a new video, if that's what you'd like to do. All right. Thanks a lot. See you later.